Well, good morning. I'm sitting here with Antimo Cimino, my friend, my colleague, a uh, gentleman I've known for a number of years. I've traveled portions of the world with Antimo, and we've developed not only a friendship, but a mutual respect. And I have a chance to talk to Antimo today about something new that's happening, something exciting that's happening. But before we go down that road, Antimo, tell me just a little bit more than I've shared about your story, your, not resume, but you know, your story. Sure, thank you, Kirk. Likewise, I feel the same way with you. Um, I am Italian born and raised, and I moved actually to Portland, Oregon about uh, in March 25 years ago. My life has been continuously uh, a reinvention, a rewriting a book or a new chapter in a book. Um, a life of uh, resilience, a life of uh, um, diversity in the ways of uh, where I lived, what did I do, what did I study, the people that I met. And um, I went to culinary school to begin with, uh, then uh, worked in hotels, uh, moved to the US where I studied um, business school. And there I took a class in intercultural communication and boom, I thought, that's me. That is my life. That is uh, what I'm, I'm supposed to do. And so I completely diverted everything into a focus of intercultural communication and education. And finally, and eventually I got my master's in intercultural relations. And soon after that, uh, I started working in the field of intercultural communication for a great institute uh, for more than uh, five years. And eventually took a, also a position as a project manager for a leadership, com a leadership development company uh, worldwide known. And uh, that was, you know, um, kind of Pandora box opened up for me in terms of seeing where um, diversity and inclusion, multicultural teams and leadership came together. Um, and I was uh, absolutely in my element, in love. And I knew that was uh, the type of work that makes a really um, incredible contribution to the world. And so, and that in, uh, in, a, in short led to uh, creating in, uh, cultural global labs to uh, offer a venue, a gathering, a conference, a professional development uh, gathering for people that are, that are dealing with multicultural issues, leadership, uh, innovation in terms of uh, how do we think about the world that we're living in and the challenges, both as people, as technology, um, and how do we prepare ourselves in the workplace, ourselves as individuals, and how do we um, become leaders of uh, the world we want to shape? And that's why I created uh, Cultural Global Labs. And I know from personal experience, and, and I think this dovetails nicely into the work you're doing at Cultural Global Labs, that heartbeat that you just described uh, is also expressed through another company that you run uh, called Vumigo. And Vumigo is where I got introduced to you and I got introduced to the Italian culture. I got introduced to multiculturalism through you at a couple of conferences. But you've taken your passion for, you, you listed them, diversity and inclusion, leadership development, and intercultural communication, multicultural studies. And you not only have pursued that, maybe if we could use the term academically, as, as, a, as an academic pursuit applied in real life, but you've also used Vumigo to express those same things to a group of people who now go and experience the world very differently than they might have by just going and signing up for some tour package. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah, no, absolutely spot on. Actually, I will add one thing. When I became a little bit disillusioned with where uh, the job and the company I was working for was going, um, seeing that it was a numbers game, I decided to stop pursuing um, jobs or climbing the ladder. And uh, one message that throughout all of those years, uh, 10, 12 years of that, um, that resonated in my mind was, we were constantly telling leaders of very big organizations in the world to be carefully choosing talent, to um, take the time to understand where their passion was, and to make sure that there was congruency between their heartbeat, their passion, and their work, and therefore the strategy for the company and the image of the company. Well, um, that's often the case that it's uh, just a nice um, uh, talk, but- uh, Slogan, it's a slogan. Yeah, it's a slogan, you know, it sounds good, it's attractive. Well, then uh, when I lost my job, I said, you know what? 
I'm done. I am going to be congruent and align with that idea that if I follow my passion, my heartbeat, what I'm most interested in, I know I'll be making the best contribution I can make to this world for the life I've been given on this earth. And so uh, Vumago pretty much came um, as the culmination of my talents, both as a chef, uh, speaking six languages, having traveled the world, lived uh, in four different countries, and the intercultural communication, and that idea that um, you want to show somebody your culture or a different culture through the back door of the local authentic experience, not the touristic circuit. So Vumago is in essence an experiential travel company, very intercultural. When you travel with me, I make you see back doors of uh, my family, my friends, their workplace, uh, their farm, cooking with them, uh, harvesting grapes with them, making wine with them. Um, so it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, front and center, about relationships with people, connection, so that your mind goes, wow, these people are amazing. They are giving me everything they have. And it makes you think about uh, um, the, the, the value of human connected, connectedness instead of all oh, the beautiful things I saw and the um, amazing wine that I drink uh, and on the trip and all of that. But it's about uh, human, that uh, the, when you meet somebody different is when you also understand yourself better. Well, you use one of my favorite words, congruence, and I think congruence is important for us to live fulfilling lives. And I see the work that you do with Vumago as absolutely consistent with uh, the work that's being done with Cultural Global Labs and the mindset behind it of diversity and inclusion, uh, intercultural communication, leadership development, uh, uh, emotional intelligence and leadership. All of those things fit consistently. So it's not a travel company. It's an extension of your core beliefs about life, allowing you the chance to operate congruently with who you are. I think Absolutely. it's magnificent. So let's talk about that. This new endeavor uh, is not brand new. It's been it's been stewing and cooking for a couple of years now in your heart and your mind. Yeah. Tell me about the uh, tell me about the reason the the why behind Cultural Global Labs. Well, mostly I feel that the world needs uh, a uh, something different when it comes to going to conferences, personal and professional uh, leadership development. Uh, whether it's for um, your own personal business or the organization you work for, thinking strategically about where the organization you work for wants to go, all of those elements that make people send others to a conference to take uh, a, a workshop. I wanted to be uh, really trying on a couple of levels. Uh, the authenticity aspect. Uh, can you unplug from your workplace, from your task? and focus on the needs about uh, diversity and inclusion, cross-cultural communication, cultural and emotional intelligence, and truly start acting from a very authentic place, becoming vulnerable, and being in a situation that puts you slightly off out of the comfort zone. Because if we are always taking workshops in our own culture, in our own environment, where we're not challenged in many different ways, sure you're learning, but uh, are you learning with the biggest of the potential? So Cultural Global Labs uh, is going to happen every year in a different country. And uh, every time you take a workshop, there will be also an element of trying the theory into practice by experiencing the local culture, interacting with the locals. There might be activities and teamwork organized so that those theories are tested. And then the other beautiful thing that we're doing is uh, um, we are also creating a final day dedicated to open space. And open space is this uh, a new technology, if you will, for learning where everybody agrees uh, to attend and they are contributing the best of their experience and their knowledge. And they know that they will stay in one room about any topic that they have uh, decided and they will stay in the room if they are contributing and if they're getting something out of it. If one of these two things isn't happening, they know that they are going to take themselves out to go to the next workshop where their contribution and their uh, getting something out of it is actually happening. And so they'll do so without judgment, without consequence. They'll just realize I'm not contributing or I'm not benefiting, so it's time for me to leave. 
yeah. And so that provides also a way to network with more people, connect with more people, uh, truly giving, um, uh, you sure you came to learn, but we know how much you know, how much knowledge, how much experience you have. And for us to co-facilitate that experience in the setting of a certain topic uh, within you know, a group of 30, 40 people, it is uh, um, gold because uh, other professionals are looking up to you, um, uh, to your success with a certain issue in your organization. And now they might uh, copy, use, borrow, uh, collaborate with you. So, uh, and then I'll finish up by saying that uh, Cultural Global Lab is going to be funded or has been found on five pillars that are critical and they will be um, the supporting structure, the uh, um, the congruent moments, if you will, throughout the conferences. And that is vulnerability, if you don't allow yourself to be vulnerable, you have some sort of a wall also in your learning ability. But if you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable, you are more recept receptive to learning. Uh, vulnerability will also lead to a sharing of authentic stories. If the story you have to tell comes from a very authentic place, then you are going to connect with people and that's another pillar. Connectedness with others happen from the heart. Um, not just from the mind with a scope in your mind, but if you connect authentically with somebody, you have achieved a lot more than just if you use, oh, I can use that person because that person can give this to me and can benefit me this way. Uh, and then uh, um, vulnerability, sharing of stories, connectedness leads, of course, to transformation. Um, and transformation of that kind only can, it can only lead to incredible transformative growth. So um, this is what the total experience of spending five days uh, at uh, Cultural Global Lab will do. So let's hit those one more time if we could. Let's go down pillar by pillar. Number one, vulnerability. vulnerability. Number two. Stories, the power of stories. Because life is story and shared story is what leads to one of our other pillars, which is transformation. Number three. Connection. Connection right. first. One of my big pillars in my life is, is connectedness. I think that's how we as humans make a difference in one another's life. The fourth pillar. And so transformative um, experience is transformative is the fourth. Transformation. And, uh, if, if all of this good stuff we experience doesn't lead to real change in us and in the world in which we engage, then it's kind of meaningless. It's just theoretical. And the yeah. fifth pillar. The growth. Everybody wants to see some sort of, sort of growth, right? You send people somewhere uh, you want some return on investment. Absolutely. The return, return on investment is here is uh, multi-layered. There is a personal, that person is going to get a lot out of these five days, a lot more than they th think. It's going to reflect on them professionally. The organization is going to receive over time some amazing benefit of implementing some new strategy connected to the things that this person came to learn. Um, and uh, of course, if uh, we want to uh, talk the corporate language, it's going to convert into numbers because if you're doing the right thing, people are noticing, your employees are much happier, they want to stay in your workplace and enjoy the environment, and you're going to reap the benefits also from a financial standpoint. Which is why the fifth pillar is so important, growth. And the numbers do matter. I think they're the natural result of effectively executing on the first four pillars, but nevertheless, in any organization, uh, there's some metric that, that determines the survivability of that organization. So growth does matter. This isn't just woo-woo. This isn't just feel good. This is about actual results. Yeah. And, and if I can say so, Anthony, what I love about the name, life, work, I don't care if it's a nonprofit, private sector, public se sector, life has become, in the world in which we live today, a cultural global lab. So why not go get experience in a, in a more... Um, conference type setting to get the tools and resources and equipment necessary to be more effective in what already is a cultural global lab, whether you're on the bus, on an airplane, in the boardroom, the conference room, or sitting around the table at the nonprofit planning your next event, you're going to be dealing in a multicultural, very diverse world of people that you want to interact with. And, and I think the name is so apropos because you're taking theoretical principles and you're putting them into practice so that you can go back into life and put those into practice. Yeah. In the yeah, lab of life. I'll, I'll spend just another uh, minute on the idea and uh, uh, the, the choosing the word labs was very intentional. 
while it sounds like a strange, um, but if you think about labs um, are where innovation happens, where um, great ideas are brought together to solve discovery. Uh, discovery, it's excitement, it's a focus, it's uh, um, solving problems for or, or creating new solutions. Uh, it's an exciting place to be. And, and it doesn't have to be uh, a, a technology lab or a scientific lab. It can be a human communication, intercultural communication lab, where people from different cultural backgrounds are getting together, contributing their highest and best and potential. And that's the beauty uh, in, uh, in And in raw honesty, it's where failure occurs. Uh, appropriate, necessary failure to learn from and move forward from. And it, when that occurs in the lab, it's way better than when it occurs in real life. And so if we can learn in the lab laboratory. And it's uh, a, good, a great safe environment to fail in because there are like-minded people, um, a lot of people who, even if you made a faux pas that may end up hurting somebody, there is an opportunity to talk it out, to find a solution and to extrapolate the learning oh, I said that and it came across like that. Oh my God, I hurt somebody, didn't mean to. And you can talk it out and see, where did you go wrong? What did you have to modify? Um, and, and how does that my, might apply in my workplace, in my team, in my leadership team, with my direct reports? You know, all of that. So is this is a great segue into my last two things I want to cover before we're done here today. Uh, the first one is let's talk about those facilitators that are going to be a part of this amazing conference. And then secondly, let's talk about the when and the where. Yeah, they are outstanding. I am extremely proud to say that uh, they have pushed me, every single one of them, to make this happen. Uh, they've seen my work. I've been around them for many, many, many years. And uh, they are very successful individuals. Uh, uh, some of them are the gurus. For instance, uh, uh, Anita um, Rowe and uh, Lee Gordonsworth are the guru of emotional intelligence and they work with a great company around the globe and I am honored to have them on the, on the board of uh, the presenters. We have, uh, um, since the conference is going to be in Europe, in Italy, Southern Italy, we also have some European presenters that are, are outstanding. One in particular, um, and this is very uh, pertinent to the uh, diversity issues that uh, Europe uh, uh, is experiencing, uh, Veronique Chauffel. Uh, Veronique is an incredible human being who has uh, spent uh, sufficient time to uh, truly understand from the heart the issue of uh, apartheid and diversity and inclusion in South Africa. So she brings a wealth of knowledge and an example, and she is so beautifully composed and inspiring as she talks about things and uh, she um, established rapport with you. She'll be well, when you talk about a real life lab, what happened in South Africa in the last 30 years, 25 years, has been an actual lab in process. Yeah, and she would be presenting on the issues of emigration and immigration and with a little bit of an insight into the concept of Ubuntu leadership. Um, then we have another European, Andre Juriga. Um, Andre is a fabulous other human being who is an expert in cultural intelligence and uh, is going to apply that uh, framework and that theory uh, to examine the work and help people that are working with multicultural teams and what it is needed to be successful. Uh, we also have um, uh, um, Marcia um, Edelman, who is going to be presenting on uh, a very interesting concept, the concept of multicultural identity and how some people um, are struggling through the different identities that they incorporate. And that is across the full spe spectrum of diversity. Um, and uh, the feeling of embodied, embodied identity and how to have a dialogue about it, how to um, uh, look at uh, the conflict that it presents within itself, yourself and other people. Um, we have another workshop that is going to be fantastic for people who are looking at uh, understanding more about intercultural uh, communication. Uh, Mary Mears uh, from the University of Alabama is going to do a workshop of three days about uh, teaching and training in intercultural. Um, 
and let's see. Uh, oh, and then we have uh, Amer Ahmed, who's uh, also presenting on a topic that uh, um, bridges both leadership development and, and social justice, if you will, and diversity and inclusion, uh, is uh, uh, charismatic beyond. Uh, and finally, uh, the person that I'm also very proud, uh, um, who is uh, uh, a native of Alaska, but lives in uh, Germany, my dear friend, Suzanne Taylor, is going to be the one that is a particular gifted to do this kind of work. Um, it, she will be debriefing the last day of open space. So this is incredibly exciting, incredibly exciting. It is exciting. I've experienced several of the people's uh, uh, presentations and connection with them uh, in, in a conference I've been a part of. And I think the, uh, the list is amazing. Extraordinary people doing extraordinary work, congruent with who they are and, and who they, uh, how they want to affect the world. So let's talk about the when and the where. So when is going to be June 2020 from the 15th until the 19th of June. It's going to happen in this beautiful, historical, ancient town in southern Italy, Puglia, uh, the region in the south, the east side of uh, the boot, in the town of Lecce. It's a fabulous uh, uh, Baroque, Rococo town, also known like the Florence of the South. We are um, staying in a, a really nice facility that was the first five-star hotel in Lecce. Uh, today, a four-star because a new five-star hotel came up, but it's a beautiful, iconic building, uh, kind of a 70s, 80s feel. Um, and uh, we hope um, you will consider uh, joining us. And uh, if not this year, because you have uh, other engagements, by all means, please uh, share the website and the link with your network. It would be very helpful. And rumor has it that those who attend the conference with us will actually have an opportunity to perhaps meet the Queen of Lecce herself. <laughs> yes, so the Queen of Lecce, as uh, uh, Kirk uh, refers to, is uh, my dearest friend, Daniela Leopizzi, who happens to be uh, the event manager at the hotel we're staying, and she's a, a very delightful person. So where can people find out about it, and how can they register? So you can find out by going to cultural dash globallabs.com again www.cultural-globallabs.com that's it well i can't tell you how much i appreciate your time i'm thrilled to be a part of this i, I know my interest is uh, my interest in this interview is um uh, somewhat selfish because i couldn't be more excited to be a part of this to be a part of cultural global labs and to be joining you in june uh, in Italy for this incredible event and to be joining it not only as a part of Cultural Global Labs but as a student to learn more, to sit in session and to grow and to deepen my understanding of all of these things. So thank you Antimo for your time. Thank I look you. forward to talking with you more and and so those of you who are watching, uh, we're going to, as, as availability allows, we're going to be scheduling these little interviews with some of our presenters so you can get a flavor for what this will be like moving forward. Thank you for your time and we look forward thank to you. more.